Hello there and time for another video tutorial and we'll be taking another look at the wave modifier it's pretty much one of my favorites and most of the times when you see someone using a wave modifier they usually create a plate, apply the wave modifier and that's all what we're going to do now is try to create a nice little clip using the wave modifier in a whole new way and let's begin I'll begin with the default cube right here I'm going to hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and I'm going to hit the S key to scale it down and about there and I'm actually scaling the object in edit mode because I want to and I'll hit the tab key to go back to object mode and hit N key for this toolbar right here and I'm scaling the object in, in edit mode so I keep the scale of the object still at 1 now I'll hit 7 on my very keypad to switch to top perspective view and 5 to change to top ortho and now hit the G key to grab the cube and I'm going to move it I'm holding down the control key also and I'm going to move it at about here you can see where the cube is and what I'm going to do now is move to the modifiers panel and I'm going to add an array modifier now I'm going to deselect the relative offset and I'm going to click here at the constant offset and I'm going to set the x value from 0 to minus 0 0.5 so you see what we got here and I add another modifier, an IRA modifier again and this time around I also deselect the relative offset but I'm going to change the constant offset the Y value to 0 0.5 ok I'll hit the tab key to go to edit mode and I'm going to hit the S key to scale my cube down and tab key again to go to object mode and I'm going to change the count value first for the y axis I'm going to set it I think at 33 it's nice and I'm going to set the count at 33 for the uh, x IRA modifier as well and you pretty much see what we get what I'm going to do now is hit shift A to add an empty and I'll move right here and increase the size of the empty I'm going to set it to 5 and I'm going to change the display then change it to sphere ok now back at my cubes and the modifiers panel and I'm going to add another modifier and this time I'll create a wave modifier now I'm going to hit Alt A just to take a look at the animation and you can see what the wave modifier does by using the arrays we have a pretty cool pretty nice result and what I'm going to do now is move down at the wave modifier and I'm going to click right here at the normals so what the normals option does is that it uh, uses the same wave uh, modifier as before but this time around it doesn't move the cloned objects or the vertices but it kind of inflates the normals by using the Kate value now I want you to see this one and I'm going to change the height value from 0.5 to minus 0.4 and see what we get now what it does is that it tells Blender that for the wave pattern the normals are going to be decreased or inflated by this value and I think I like it as it is 
and I'm just going to hit top key just to scale my cube a bit more right about there and we're good I'll hit 7 on my numeric keypad to switch to top also view I'm going to hit del on my numeric keypad again just to frame the wave and I'm going to hit Control alt 0 to place my camera I'm going to right click this frame right here to select the camera and I'm going to let's change these two and I'm going to change the Z value let's change it to I don't know, 18 now you can see the wave clearly we're at the top and I'll hit the escape key to stop the animation just move a few frames forward so we can see the wave and what I'm also going to do is select the cubes and change the start position I click right here we're at the wave modifier and set it to empty so now the wave modifier uses the empty position for the initial wave now if we hit Alt A again and let's say hit the Z key to grab and the X key to move on the X axis we can move the initial wave we can move the center of the wave wherever we want by placing the empty now zero again for the camera and you can see the result now I'll hit one on my main keypad and I'm going to pause the animation and I'm going to hit select the cubes and hit shift D to make a duplicate and Z to constrain movement on the Z axis and I'm going to move the duplicate one unit up okay now as you can see I'm creating uh, another let's say layer of uh, the wave modifier and the objects I'm going to hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and take a closer look at our cube right here and I'm going to hit the W for the spatials menu and I'm going to select subdivide now the cube is subdivided I'm going to hit shift alt S for the two sphere option and I'm going to set the two sphere all the way up to one I'm also going to hit the S key to scale my spheres down because yeah you know they look like spheres now and tab key to switch to object mode again now let's begin adding some materials I'll select the bottom layer that bottom thing right here and we already have a material here I'm going to click at the two make a single user copy for this material because we want to apply different materials to these rows of uh, arrays and I'm going to let's call it bottom mat I'm going to eh, let's leave it at white bring the specular down now I'm selecting the spheres and I'm going to change the name of the material to middle mat and I'm going to change the diffuse color I'm going to make it red and I think it looks nice now selecting the bottom layer again the bottom thing again one on my numeric keypad now shift D for another duplicate and Z to constrain movement on the Z axis let's move it up now, tab key again for edit mode and I'm going to hit the S key to scale and shift Z so that I'm only scaling my object on the X and Y axis at about there and hit the S key again and scale it on the Z axis only at about there now, tab key take a look at how this one affects our scene and I'll click here for a new material 
click the two icon here and I'm going to use to rename it as top material and I'm going to set the diffuse color let's say to something orange I'm going to click zero on my mirror keypad just to take a look at the camera perspective view and I'm going to hit shift A to add another empty now time to change the empty the new empty size again and I'm going to set it to 10 just so we can see it and select it easier I'm setting it to 12 I'm going to select the camera right click this frame to select it and hold down the shift key and right click the empty let's find them right click select the camera hold down the shift key and click the empty the new empty to select it and hit control P to set power to object now I'm right clicking the new empty to select it and I'm going to rename it let's also rename it I'm going to rename this as cam empty because this one is the parent of the camera now zero for the camera perspective view and my empty is selected and I'm going to hit it R key to rotate and Y to constrain rotation on the, on the Y axis and I'm going to rotate it right about there and I'm also going to select the camera and move it back yeah at about 30 now let's change the world settings a bit we're going to try and render a first frame just to see how it all looks I'm going to change the horizon color from black to white I'm going to select Abbey in the Collision and Environment Lighting and let's keep it at ray trace and let's change the samples to 8 and I'm also going to increase the environment lighting from 1 to 1.5 ok let's render an image and that's what we get now you could also, I'm going to select the spheres right here and I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier and I'll just make sure that I'm going to change the view from 1 to 0 so that uh, the subdivision surface modifier won't uh, affect the playback for our scene and I'm also going to change the shading to smooth for this layer and let's render again it will take some while now because the spheres and the geometry yeah needs a while to be calculated and that's what we get I'm going to try something else I'm going to select the bottom layer again hit 1 on my memory keypad and zoom in and I'm going to shift D create another duplicate hit the Z key to constrain movement on the Z axis for the duplicate I'm going to move it 3 units up and I'll also hit shift S and click cursor to select it now my, my cursor is at this cube right here and so I'm going to hit shift oh first of all I'm going to hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and you see what I'm doing this and I'll hit shift A to add a cylinder now I'm going to set the cylinder vertices from 32 down to 8 and I'm going to disable the fill type it was set to nigons and now it's set to nothing and what I'm also going to do is scale the cylinder down to 
scale it down. And about there. And remember we have both the cube and the cylinder geometries uh, in this object. But let's see what we can do. I'll hit the R key to rotate and Y to constrain rotation on the Y axis. And I'm rotating my cylinder now 7 for the top view and the del key on my numeric keypad to zoom to our object and I'll hit the S key to scale it and X to scale it on the X axis. Let's scale it down and let's keep it. I want my cylinders to touch to touch each other here. Yeah. And about there. And now scale once more and shift X. So I'm only scaling my cylinder on the Y and Z axis. I'm going to scale it down. And about there. And now that my cylinder is in position, is exactly where I want it to be, I'm going to select this corner of our cube. Hit the L key to select link. And I'm going to delete the cube vertices. Okay, now we have the cylinder positioned. I'm going to hit Tab key and let's hit Tab key again. Let's hit the A key to select all and Control me to calculate the normal south side. And I'll also click Smooth for the shading option. And I'm going to move to the modifiers and for the first modifier, for the X modifier, and I'm talking about this one, I'm also going to click merge. So that blender merges the touching geometry of the of the cylinder. Now tab key again and you can always and I'm going to scale it down a bit more hit the tab key and scale and shift X scale our cylinder down a bit and tab key again and you can see that we now use a different kind of object and the RA is merged but the wave also affects this one and I think it looks pretty nice now I'm going to add another modifier subdivision surface again like we did with the spheres with the spheres thing with the spheres layer right here and I'm going to set the subsurf modifier for this one as well the view to zero now time for the material for our top layer I'm going to click right here and change the name to top top material I'm going to set the diffuse color to blue and I'm going to yeah let's use transparency as well I'm using Z transparency set the alpha to 0 0.4 and I'll also change the fresnel value from 0 to 2 now 0 for our camera view again and let's take another look let's render an image we'll have to wait a bit because we're getting uh, more and more vertices for our geometry and that's how it looks you can see that the wave modifier uh, changes every object and I think it looks pretty nice let's modify it a bit I'm going to change the camera angle I'm going to select the empty and let's fiddle with the rotation values just a bit I set the Z to 30 and the X to 25 and I think we're good. I'm going to hit Alt A 
I warn you it's going to be slow but let's take a look you can see the wave as it begins and moves and that's pretty much it and we also have some kind of object relation and because and that's because we can uh, click the, the first empty the one that controls the wave modifier the initial wave and we could also hit the G key to grab it and the X key to constrain movement of the X axis and make a pretty nice animation just by animating the the empty position as you can see here and what would also look nice is to move down here at the post processing and I'm going to click edge and add a threshold of 2 and let's render the final image so we can see how it looks so as you can see we've only used a a simple wave modifier here and we have a very interesting, a very nice result uh, feel free to change the edge color I think yeah it looks pretty nice but feel free to change it as you wish so as always you can, uh, you can tweak it, you can change it you can uh, use the modifiers in all sorts of ways and I'll be rendering some uh, some examples and posting them as well so hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching